Dalvin Cook has had a big day, 115 yards and a touchdown. You can add to the number here. Oh, beautiful spin move, and Cook takes it to the outside. Oh, what an effort. Dalvin Cook, touchdown Vikings. Hello, hello, let's go. It's your man Flip Mozzie, and thank you for spending 15 minutes with me today. After the game on Sunday, man, what a crazy week it's been. My last podcast was last Monday, so that's before the Seahawks law, before the John DiFilippo firing, before the game against the Miami Dolphins. So we got a lot to go over in short time. We're in reaction mode, taking in the game we just watched. The Minnesota Vikings moved to 7-6-1 and with a blowout victory, a 41-17 stomping of the now 7-7 Miami Dolphins. Our Vice got out to a fast start, then struggled a bit before the defense took over and the offense came up clutch. So many plays being made, execution at an all-time high against an admittedly weaker opponent. For the Vikings, controlling their own destiny means every game is a big game from here on out, the five seed technically in reach, and hey, how about a win against a team with a winning record? Technically, Dolphins don't count since they're at 500 now, but that's only because we beat them. Why that stat can be silly at times, Vikings record matters 10 times more than the record of the opponents they play. Care about the things they can control. That's the name of the game. The purple offense today came alive early, showed a commitment to running the ball. They ran the ball 40 times. Just ridiculous. The defense got beat by a big run at a bad time, but outside of that, they played excellent football, led by the defensive line, nine sacks on Ryan Tannehill. Beyond all the talks about the standings and potential for Viking success this year, Minnesota made some big decisions that could have even bigger impact on the franchise in 2018 and beyond. John DeFilippo exits his Egan office without grace. The former offensive coordinator, we thought he'd be heading for a 2019 head coaching gig. Instead, he leaves before 2019 even begins, sharing blame of a ruined offensive effort Though I heavily criticized JDF, didn't think Rick Spielman and Mike Zimmer would make this move. They did, and it looks like the right one. In steps Kevin Stefanski as interim offensive coordinator. Next to wins and losses, us fans will be paying close attention. What does the offense look like from here on out? After one game, it looks much better. Now the Dolphins have a weak run defense, so we gotta be careful. But even so, the unit instantly, instantly improved. Some fans will be ready to strip that interim tag off of Stefanski's name already. We dream for Stefanski to hold it down, deliver, and maximize the team's offensive talent, but we had no idea what to expect against the Dolphins. One thing we do know, he's been with Zimmer for five years and he knows Mike's style. He's got knowledge of our running backs, our tight ends, and most importantly, our quarterbacks. It was a perfect mix on Sunday. From the start, we saw everything we wanted from the offense. They got Dalvin Cook and the run game going. A screen pass worked. They overcame a penalty, used a lot of play action, used no huddle. Then the touchdown strike to Diggs. Play action rollout with Kirk on the move, not back there as a statue where he struggles. Miami's secondary got concerned with the run game, safety cheated and got burnt. An easy touchdown for Kirk and Diggs is dancing. That was just the start. Dalvin Cook showed superb vision on the second drive. Tight end Tyler Conklin making plays down the field. Then Dalvin beats the man to the edge and sprints into the end zone. 14-0 bikes. And on the third drive, everything just kept on clicking. The offense struck again with the run game factoring in. Dolphins couldn't stop Cook or Murray. Diggs started getting open to move the chains against single coverage, then Thielen made a Minnesota nice sideline grab. Latavius Murray steams into the end zone after an edge run and stiff arm. 21 to nothing. 
Dreams start before things started heading south. Offensive line issues started to rear their ugly head, holding penalties, false starts, that pushed Minnesota in the second and long, then third and long where Kirk tried to throw the receiver screen, gets picked off, Dolphins take it to the house. Momentum switch. After the pick six, Minnesota comes out, goes three and out, offense fell apart, those failures lasted into the second half. Two three and outs, one was lucky enough to be in field goal range after a long punt return by Marcus Sherrill. Two plays made us forget about all those struggles. First on third and nine early in the fourth quarter, 10 point game, Kirk drops back then delivers on the 40 yard bomb. Aldrick Robinson on the deep post. They made that look easy, pitch and catch. Cousins reading the safety then going over the top. Robinson making the easy grab above purple paint then doing his patented touchdown dance. We've seen it five times this year. Play number two on the next drive. First and 15 in field goal range. Cook starts, stops, spins, then bounces to the outside and bursts into the end zone. Play of the game, exceptional effort, dazzling talent, put the game at 41-17, final game over. We forgive the offensive laps because the start and finish were so strong. And while the offense struggled, the defense just kept on giving them chances. Don't get me wrong, the defense got shell-shocked too. With 10 points allowed on back-to-back -back drives and the pick six coming shortly before, Miami put up those 17 points in short order. The Dolphins threw back a punch. It rocked our purple. Miami had all momentum, but Minnesota slowly won it back through great defensive play. Early on, they put down the clamps. Anthony Barr flashing into the backfield to stop a Frank Gore run. Then Mackenzie Alexander breaking up a deep third down pass. The next time Miami got the ball, three and out and punt. After that, it was 21 to nothing. Miami was in a deep hole, but they actually stuck with the run. That was a theme later on as well. They got two first downs through rushing before Barr made another splash play, sacking Tannehill on second down, made it third and 14, and the D had the 21 points they needed. Defense was cruising before the interception, but that turnover gave Miami life. They went down the field on a 14-play, 61-yard drive that ended in a field goal. Anthony Harris almost made a key pick after Kendricks jarred the ball loose. Rhodes almost got a pick too, but Devontae Parker broke it up and saved the Dolphins three points. Adam Gase ran and depended on short passes, yards after catch to generate his offense. 21-10 going into halftime, Minnesota was still in good shape. But the defensive laps happened at the same time as the offensive struggles. Kalen Balaj hit on a 75-yard touchdown on the first play of the third quarter. A bounce back was sorely needed after that score. The Vikings offense didn't do it. The defense did. Four punts in a row following that drive. Two more fourth down stops and a series of plays where the defense looked championship caliber. Barr made all his plays today. Eric Hendricks got in on a blitz and sack of Tannehill. Alexander with his fourth sack of the year, his best day of a great season for him. And you know, the defensive line was still bringing it too. Daniil Hunter with two QB hits and two sacks. Everson Griffin made plays in the backfield, whether it was run or pass. Sheldon Richardson and Tom Johnson getting in on the action too. Defense looked a lot like they did against Detroit in week nine. Offense put up even more points than in week four against the Rams. Most points they scored all year. Offense and defense in sync. Not a perfect game, but hell yes, we'll take that effort every week. Looking at the playmakers for both teams, Ryan Tannehill didn't play extremely poorly. His stat sheet says differently, but having a sore ankle on Sunday was not the recipe for success. 
Zimmer just schooled this young kid. Exotic blitzes, defenders coming from everywhere. The Vikings forced Miami to go 2 for 12 on third down, and I don't even think they showed that double A gap look once. Zimmer has plenty in his pocket. The Dolphins receivers, Dami Amendola, led them with three catches and 30 yards. Don't let the havoc up front distract us from the efforts that rode. Alexander and Trey Waynes put in today. Masterful. Kenny Stills and Devontae Parker did nothing. But Kalen Balaj, he was Miami's only breathing offensive player. The Dolphins have been hitting on those explosive runs all winter. Balaj gave them the goods today. Now for the Vikings, Kirk Cousins was a different guy. Yes, he had the bad mental laps on the pick six, but not as bad as usual. Yes, they asked him to do less, but he delivered when called upon. Most importantly, he spread the ball around. Tyler Conklin, Aldrich Robinson. This offense all of a sudden has multiple dimensions. They have another dimension, the run game, both Dalvin Cook and Latavius Murray. What did K. Steph make the OL for breakfast on Sunday? Let's keep doing that. Three rushing touchdowns, they had six all year before this game. Huge spikes in yards per carry and success rate too. Dalvin Cook's vision, agility, and speed. Just so much fun to watch. Now Diggs and Thielen didn't draw their usual target share, but both came up clutch. Offense having more weapons, less targets for our main two guys, that's all good. Diggs and Thielen will start making noise again if teams have to account for Cook, Robinson, Kyle Rudolph, Tyler Conklin. There's a couple of items that could be overlooked this week as we enter the postgame. First, what an effort by the special teams. Dan Bailey made all seven of his kicks on Sunday. Breath of fresh air. No shanks by Matt Weil. Plenty of hang time. Then the Golden Gopher. Marcus Sherrills racks up 116 yards on punt returns, including his 70-yarder that would have been a touchdown if shoes didn't have shoelaces. Special teams was a big part of the mid-game turnaround effort. The second overlooked item, health. The Vikings are very healthy right now. David Morgan came back from a knee injury played for the first time since the early November game against Detroit in Week 9. I can tell you if Morgan was in there blocking, he was doing a good job, so great to finally get him back. Sheldon Richardson also had a hip injury last week. He battled through it. Didn't seem to slow him down at all. Mike Remmers played through a knee injury. He looked healthy to me. I mean, I didn't notice a difference in his play, for better or for worse, but at least he's still out there. The only guy we still want back is Chad Beebe, still nursing that hamstring. I think he's a piece of this offensive puzzle for 2018. Outside of recovering from past injury, there's the fact that no new injuries took place in this game. Minnesota entered healthy with an offensive coordinator that had never called plays before. They left healthy with 41 points on the board and a 24-point victory. Let that soak in. Next up, a road matchup. In the division as Minnesota heads to Detroit for the penultimate game of the 2018 regular season. Despite an up and down year, our Purple only have one division loss at this point. A win against the Lions would put them at 3-1-1 in the NFC North. Matt Patricia's first season as the Lions head coach went sideways. Detroit fell apart, just lost to the Buffalo Bills, and they didn't look good in their Week 9 contest against our Vikes either. One of three games this year where Minnesota jumped out to a double-digit first-half lead. Dalvin sparked the offense with a big 70-yard run in his return. Then the defense clamped down. Constant pressure on Matt Stafford, 10 sacks, a Daniil Hunter breakout game where he nabbed nine combined tackles, three and a half sacks, a loose football, and a touchdown. The offense did just enough. We gotta remember Stephon Diggs didn't play back in Week 9. B.B., Laquan Treadwell, Aldrick Robinson did just enough to compliment Thielen. But great defense led the way in that game, and we're hoping that great defense makes a difference on the road in Week 16. The same things that beat Detroit, special runs by Dalvin, secondary receiving options, stellar defense, 
Those are all the things we saw against Miami on Sunday. Around the league, Chicago clinches the NFC North. Seattle struggles against San Francisco. Washington edges out Jacksonville. Dallas gets shut down in Indianapolis. Carolina and Philly are playing night games, but Minnesota is slowly rising out of the scrap for the NFC's sixth seed. Our sights are set even higher than that. Our Vikes get a Week 15 win, slam the door on some of the weaker NFC pretenders. They continue to bumble while our purple gets stronger. A Week 16 win continues that same narrative for Minnesota. They still have the chance to threaten in the NFC playoff if they just finish strong. Two more to win, one at a time. Skull Vikings. Vikings.